Good evening everyone, welcome along to the SFC interviews here with Connor Calcutt today. This is episode 80 as well, so how's things gone? Yeah, they're good. It's cracking on, working, living in lockdown. Well, it's nearly out. It's been a crazy year for absolutely everyone, hasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, bonkers. I'm glad we're seeing the back of it. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, we'll, we'll go into your time at Stevenage here. And um, originally you were brought in on trial. So, you know, uh, did you have many sort of offers from other clubs to come in for pre-season with them as well? Or was it just Stevenage at that time? Uh, the season before, I was at Millwall. Um, I'd literally gone from non-league to Millwall and then nothing really happened there. And they said, go to Stevenage and see how we get on. And Stevenage was the only real pro club I was um, approached by. Um, I think it was, if it wasn't Stevenage, it probably would have been a team in the national, I think, because it was a massive jump because I think I was in step eight at Bertho. Okay, yeah. And that all the way up to obviously League Two at the time was a bit unheard of. So I was lucky to get my deal. But I managed to squeeze one out. <laughs> I think the, the reason you squeeze one out is, you know, down to my, my next question, really, and or my next point, and that's the West Ham um, pre-season friendly when you scored. And, of course, um, you know, it was a fantastic performance from the boys that day. And, you know, I, I, I bet, you know, on the back of that, you had, I'm sure you probably would have had a few more offers on the back of that, wouldn't you, as well? It was a few phone calls, but... Um... The whole day, I was completely, I was, I was on cloud nine. I, I think it's probably my, one of the most important goals I think I've ever scored in my life. Because at the time, I think we had the game on the Saturday um, and Wesley brought me into the dressing room on Friday. And he was very honest. He said, look, you're not at the level that we like, obviously need, but you're improving. So we're going yeah. to give you another couple of weeks. I think he said another two weeks to see if you continue improving. And then I managed to get on and nick a goal. So I was over the moon. And then, yeah, of course, it's a big, uh, big team to score against in West Ham as well. What made it good is a couple of my mates are West Ham fans and they were watching the game. So, as soon as I got into the motor outside, it was all the group chats were going crazy. So, it was, it was a crazy time. And, uh, of course, you know, that was, um, the well, it, it all kind of kicked off from, from there for you, didn't it, really, in regards to getting your, your contract with the, with the club and. You know, being signed by Graham as well, and you know the, the the main question really that I've asked everyone is what was Graham like to play under? It was hard but fair, if I'm honest. He, he knew exactly what he wanted, and he wanted his players to want the same thing. I think if you buy into it, like I, I think fitness wise, that's the fittest I've ever been. Like I was running, swimming, going to the gym. I've done a few of his gym sessions as well, where the walls sweat. That they were brutal. Like, <laughs> get through the fitness you'd be in perfect condition. So, obviously, that, that squad got to the playoffs, so it can't be much he did wrong. So, I've got nothing but respect for him, to be fair. And, of course, as you said, it works as well, getting to the playoffs. And, um, you know, you made your debut against Hartlepool, and um, that was, what was that? The Was that the first game of the season, I believe, as well? And, um, yeah. you know, what, what was that like to, to kind of come in and, you know, play straight away on the back of, you know, kind of getting in there and, of course, you know, making a name for yourself against West Ham and, you know, you're competing against some decent strikers in there as well. Yeah. Well, for me, it was all, it, if I could describe it, it was a it was a roller coaster for me at that time because obviously I'd gone from playing in front of maybe 50 fans and 50 parents to, you know, thousands of people in these stadiums where people live, eat, sleep, breathe in football, and obviously there's local football, but it's massive for these people. So for me, it was a bit like, cool, people know my name. They want me to sign their programme. They don't even know who I am. <laughs> so for me, it was a bit crazy, but I enjoyed every minute, and obviously playing in these games where there's people singing and proper fans singing football, it was incredible at the time. Yeah. And of course, everyone knew your name eventually, but you know, on that West Ham one, you were, you were trying this, weren't you? Try yeah, this, or whatever it was. It was trial this too, I think. Yeah, <laughs> you're going to bring up the photo that I had. <laughs> I knew it was going to come up. <laughs> I haven't got the photo. I wish I had. God, <laughs> I wish I had. I wish I, I wish I could find it somewhere. Honestly, all you got to do is <laughs> I find it's in a group chat somewhere. Everyone, yeah. in. everyone finds it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. I, wish I, I wish I could find it. I might have to try and see if I can find it before the end. Oh <laughs> no, <I> don't. <laughs> I'm so glad that's timed out. <laughs> <laughs> no, 
But no, that was, uh, of course, you know, as I mentioned there, you were competing against some really top strikers. Uh, Adam Marriott, Beardsley, Zola. You know, Darius was playing up front sometimes as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the squad depth was ridiculous. Obviously, Maz, Adam come in. He was on, obviously, I was proper earning my stripes. And obviously, Adam come in and everyone knew exactly who he was and what he'd do. So his deal was... You know, I, when I first met him, he was like, yeah, I'm coming on trial. And I thought, oh, maybe we're on the same kind of come from non-league. But he was his record before and, you know, they instantly loved him. Whereas I had to I had to run a bit further than Adam did. But what a footballer Adam was and is still, you know, prolific goal scorer. So, and another one that came in at the same time as well was uh, Cameron Lancaster, another striker that come in. And, of course, Cam, um, was he, he come, was it from Tottenham he come from? Yeah, see, when I was a youngster, we were, at, we were at Tottenham together. So I obviously knew Cameron when he came in. So, But when I obviously I knew him, he was a winger. So obviously when he came in and he was a striker, I was like, oh, no, another one. But no, I, I like Hap Cam. He's a good lad, good player. I think he went to America, I think, and done quite well over there. So I've got nothing but time for Cam. He's a good, good, good boy, good lad. I think he might have played under Gary Smith in America, I believe. Was it yeah. Nashville, maybe? Yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure exactly the club, but I remember seeing a couple of videos. He scored a couple of screamers, I think, and I see him pop up. So it was nice to see him doing well. I remember that goal he scored for Steamers, the one where it was it was kind of it was certainly was a cross. It, it, and I, if I got him on, I'd say it was a shot, but it was a million, yeah, yeah, it certainly was a cross. Yeah. He was saying it was a cross, but he was adamant it weren't. But there's no way he was letting that go. <laughs> no, nah, that was yeah, absolutely. And why would you if you were a striker as well? Oh, I'd gobbled that up all day long. <laughs> but uh, no, you've scored your only goal for the club, um, in the league goal against Plymouth, and um, a goal that, you know, we were so close to getting three points that day as well. Um, yeah. far in, uh, what was it, a last second equaliser, wasn't it? Yeah, Vera handballed it in the penalty box. I was gutted. It's like, you ruined my, you ruined my goal. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, we, we were right in the lines then. I think they had, I think, Literally the whole game, we were just trying to hold on. And we, I think we broke away. I scored. I think I was only on for like 10 minutes. Half time, I come on. I think, um, and then Welps crossed it and it just managed to just go back where it came from and went in. I remember it like it was yesterday. <laughs> and then, yeah, we just held on and held on. And literally the last kick of the game, they just managed to squeeze a penalty out of us. Uh, it, for me, it was scoring a goal was all well, obviously massively important for me. But I think well, the way that obviously Wesley had us all drilled was like it was three points and playoff form and playoff form. So everyone was a bit gutted that we didn't get the points. But I was secretly happy that I managed to get on the score sheet. Yeah, that's completely understandable as well. You've got to be a little bit selfish for being, you know, of course, being a striker. Mm -hmm. um, and that was your first proper goal for the club as well. And I'm sure you would have wanted to kick on from that and hopefully go on and get a few more. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think. I, I was desperate to try and just get more minutes and get more minutes and just get a little bit that sharper and understand the level a little bit more. So I was slowly building up the minutes. Um, and then obviously it kind of, our form dipped off a little bit and they started to bring in, I think, bigger names and I slowly got squeezed out online. Um, and then, uh, so you played alongside Ronnie Henry in your time at the club as well. Was, uh, of course, Ronnie was captain. And if now, you know, we touched on before, um, coaching at Stephen Edge in, in the academy, academy and of course you said that you played against him when he was at Billericay as well and you know that's a massive um, you know achievement really for, for Ronnie to go on and achieve what he did with the football club Yeah good lad Ronnie he's a Hemel lad as well so obviously I knew his area you know a lot of people I know know Ronnie he's a nice lad good lad um, good footballer as well proper captain was always talking and it was his life. He loved loved playing football. So, yeah, he's a good lad, Ronnie. And, of course, uh, he's still, as I said, involved at the club as well. And that's going to be massive for the under-23s, isn't it, to have him on, uh, you know, on, on the coaching side of it. And, of course, um, Jamal Campbell-Rice is there as well. John Ashton was there up until the weekend when he's decided to step away. Yeah. Yeah, some serious ex-pros that have had, you know, real careers and played the level and understand, you know, what it takes to get to that level and not only get there, but stay there. You know, Ronnie's been at, at League Two for a long time. So, and he, did, yeah. uh, he won the conference with Stephen Edge and then he went to Luton and won the, the conference with Luton and, and then you know, he, he, uh, you know, winning the trophy and everything as well. He's, he's gone on and achieved a lot, yeah. He really is. <laughs> 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 good lad, I like him, good lad. 
So um, let's have a look here. So um, what was it like for you to actually make a step up into the football league as well? Was that something that, you know, was quite a big challenge? The best thing was I was on FIFA finally. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Nothing like me. But no, nah, it was, for me, it was a bit... Obviously, going on coach trips and staying in hotels, and obviously, I think when we played Barry away, that for me, I think, was when I was like, "Wow, this is what obviously pro football's like." So it was a bit crazy, um, and obviously, the lads that had played and done it all before, it was all the same, same for them. But for me, it was all brand new, so it's all a bit like, "Okay, this is how we've got to behave, and this is what we've got to do," and it was all a bit, a bit crazy at the time, to be honest. But I loved every minute of it. Obviously, going, instead of going to work and at the time I was laying bricks to do that and then obviously go and train all morning and go to the gym in the evening, it was it was like my dream come true. So, yeah, it was a great time. And of course, you mentioned that about being on FIFA as well. So that's obviously, you know, <laughs> is that something that you do? You play a little bit of FIFA as well, yeah? Yeah, when the little ones are asleep and the miss <laughs> okay, so I managed to squeeze a couple of minutes on there. But, yeah. Just nice downtime. Obviously, it changed when I went on there, though. I had to start creating myself again. <laughs> <laughs> I do like it, yeah. Um, so let's go back to... Um, so what did you sort of learn from your time at Stevenage as well, sort of upon you know making the step into league football? If I'm honest, I think my game actually completely changed. Um, Wesley was like, look, you're six foot three. Obviously, when I was at non-league, it was all about counter-attacks and getting in behind. So for me... He obviously looked at me and said, no, you're not going to do that at League Two level. So he obviously changed my game and it was all about hold up play and being big and strong rather than, because obviously I think he realised I'm not going to be as quick as some of the other people are naturally. So it was, right, what can we use you for? And obviously heading and holding the ball up. So for me, my game obviously completely changed. Um, and as I've gone forward, that's what I've been used for a lot more. So yeah, my game completely changed. And we had a comment there from Laura as well. Uh, she says, um, what was your best time at Stevenage? Uh, best, we've got to be the West Ham goal. Yeah, it has to be. I thought I was down the road. I thought I was going back to Burko. <laughs> scoring that game, it would have been a lot harder to squeeze a deal out. So, yeah, it has to be West Ham, I think. I think that's even uh, bigger for you as well, because you, you're a Chelsea fan, aren't you? I am a Chelsea fan, yeah. <laughs> nice. I just remember Jaskalainen being in goal. And uh, when I scored, I didn't realise who was in goal. And um, it wasn't till after the game. I w obviously, we finished the game. It was 2-2. Two -two. Uh, I walked up to him to say, like, well done and that. And uh, he said, oh, good shot. I couldn't reach it. And I was like, oh, my God. I've watched you on telly. So, yeah, yeah. it was, was a crazy day. That And then obviously, Collins was playing and Ravel Morrison was playing as well. So, they had some really, really, obviously, names that you know I've watched for years. So, it was incredible to be on the same pitch. Um, and then what have we got on here? So, um, did you sort of know much about Stevenage when you when you signed for the club? Of course, you know you played at, at Hemel locally as a youth player, and you had a uh, time with St Albans as well. Yeah, um, for me, I'd never really didn't. I honestly didn't understand how big of a club Stevenage was. So obviously, for me, it was they've just been promoted. Um, they've had an FA Cup run. I didn't really know a lot at the time of moving there. And then obviously, when I went to see the stadium, I was like, oh wow. You know, the stadium was nice at the time. Obviously, it's got much better now. They've added to it as well. Um, yeah. yeah, I really enjoyed my time there. It was really cool. And, uh, you know, you, you said there about the, the stadium now being developed, and it is a, a proper league stadium now, isn't it? You know, the training ground, the, the stadium, um, you know, everything about Stevenage now is, is a football league club. And it's, you know, it was great to, to obviously remain a football league club a season before last and then, this season, the club have gone on and just surprised everyone, haven't they, really? I think that, I like to say, I think the setup behind, obviously, the football is, it's ready for football league. Obviously, the, the training ground at the time when I went there was pretty new. Um, but obviously, having that facility there is just, you know, only going to help the players obviously progress more and more. And obviously, as you say, the ground's getting bigger and nicer and they're doing, slowly doing more and more to it, which is only going to help the area as well. So, yeah, they are definitely growing in the right way. Um, and then uh, in the October, you moved on loan to Wellstone, and uh, that's where you suffered your, your injury as well. It kept you out for, what was it, about sort of between eight, nine months or so, wasn't it? And uh, that must have been very, very difficult to know that, you know, you've gone on loan there to Wellstone. You kind of 
hoping to get some minutes and to you know get some goals and come back a stronger player, you know, a player that's in a bit of form. And you know, I think it was the first couple of games you got injured, wasn't it? Yeah, I think I was I was only supposed to be there for a month just to get a little bit sharper and play football again and obviously obviously minutes on a pitch is you can't you can't get that in training. So I think the agreement was to go there for a month and just see how it got on. Um I think I played who did we play? Bournemouth, uh Ebb's Fleet, which at the time Ed Ed's Fleet were winning everything. They had a massive, massive squad. Um there's a lot of good, good players there. So for me it was like, okay, this is national learning the league and obviously different players different environment um but it was good and then obviously oh where was my injury i remember it oh where was it now i can't remember where it was i remember how it happened keeper saved it come out i thought i could sneak in and i just rolled my ankle and the defender, oh, wow. ah. the defender was on my left and it was just my weight and his weight and the ankle said no and it just popped but at first i thought i was all right i tried to get up I thought, hmm. And I lift, as I lifted my calf up, my ankle was just... Oh, no, like, oh, yeah. <laughs> it shouldn't be. <laughs> the best thing was, is as I got in the dressing room, the physio was like, that's right, we put some ice on it and you'll be fit for Saturday. And I was like, hmm, I don't think so. And then managed to um, get to the hospital. A couple of the lads dropped me off and drove my van back, which was quite handy of them. So obviously a new lad, you know, I didn't really know anyone there. Yeah. So obviously they looked after me, went and got my ankle done, and yeah, they said two breaks and the ankle's out of place. So it was a long, long way back. And is that something that you still have a little bit of sort of you know uh, problems with now? Is that something that is, is kind of going to be a, a long term sort of lifetime thing? Or nah, to be fair, obviously my because I was at Stevenage, they really looked after me. I went to St George's, which for me was incredible um, facilities there. I went, I think I walked into St George's. Like being able to walk, I was sitting in my walking cast. I hadn't took it off, hadn't really done any physio. They just said rest. I think it was at maybe the six month period. So all my stitches had come out. Obviously, it was all healed up. It was still a bit swollen, but I hadn't put any real weight on it. Um, I went there and I, I pretty much walked out of there with nothing on. So the facilities there is incredible. Physios and the knowledge down there is just incredible. But obviously, when I come back from that, I went back to the club, um, slowly started to get my fitness back. And then in the summer, obviously, Wesley left. Yeah. Um, sharing them come in and it kind of the club obviously can, was changing. That was normally what happened when a new manager comes in. Um, and I just don't think I was in his plans. So obviously I was still trying to get fit and trying to get back to that fitness level, but having nine months out and obviously going from non league to league two, it was I was catching up already and obviously once my ankle had gone, I think a lot of people kind of just knew that it was gonna take me a long time to get up to that standard again. And, you know, that was uh, a great season for the club as well, as you said earlier about, you know, getting into the playoffs and, um, of course, then Wesley was relieved of his duties after that when we were we were beaten um, in the, the playoffs there. And, you know, that was, you know, uh, a real good time for the club. But for you, it's it's a difficult time probably to look back on. Um, to be fair, I get injuries happen in football. It was my first major injury at the time, so I kind of didn't really know how to deal with it. So obviously I just threw myself into football. So I was just watching football all the time. I was obviously studying and playing and trying to just get over my injury and do what I can. But obviously I went to went to the playoff final. So I was still a part of it. Obviously looking it like through the window is not as good as obviously being involved. But obviously I knew the lads on a personal level. So it was different. Obviously seeing them be successful was, you know, amazing to be a part of. It was just I wish I was in and amongst it. But you know, injuries happen and you kind of just have to wait. And try and get back in. Um, let's see what we've got on here. Of course, you know, we said about it off stream there with Tom Pett as well, who is now back at the football club. And, you know, you know, I was just talking to you about him before. He, he's come in. He's been exceptional this season. He's yeah. into central midfield now where he's kind of at home. And, yeah, every single week he just seems to be getting better and better. And, you know, he's been um, a, a player that over the years has been fantastic for Steve Winnie's. But... You know, I think this season is probably the best that teams have actually seen of him. Yeah, I think he's coming to that point in his career where he's he's dominating games. Um, I think when I was there, he, he just I think he, he signed the season before. I think mid like midway through, and he, you could see the talent the boy had. Um, obviously, he's playing that wide then, but he could come inside, he could go outside. He's a very very good footballer and quick, and also a nice nice lad off the pitch. So yeah, he had a lot of things that went his way, and he's a good player. 
Um, and then, so you signed, when you actually left the club, you signed for Wellstone permanently, didn't you, in 2015? And, um, you know, uh, that's a great opportunity for, for you to go back there. And, you know, you're quite grateful to them to, to kind of look back on, you know, get, you know, giving it that opportunity to go and, and sign and, and become a pro, like, um, sort of a, a regular member of their squad. Yeah, I think obviously when I left Stevenage, it was there was a few clubs that are interested, but I, I felt that I had unfinished business at Wilstein because obviously I I was not flying, but I was doing well. I was in the squad. I was scored. I scored. I think two, two or three and four. So I was in amongst the goals. Obviously, there was some big, big squads we played. Obviously, Boreham and Nevsfleet were, you know, first and second in that division. Um, yeah, we were obviously trying to get in and amongst the playoffs. Um, but yeah, I felt that there was something that I hadn't finished there. So I wanted to obviously go back and say, no, look, I'm trying to get fit. And they understood that obviously I'd had a major injury. Um, but what done it for me was I thought that my ankle was going to be weaker. And um, mm -hmm. I remember it, I was, we were still at Stevenage at the time and we played Wilson in a friendly. Um, and I can't think it was Wes, Wes Parker. He smashed me on the halfway line right on my ankle and I, like Wes is a good lad. I've known him obviously since the Willstone days, and he smashed me right on it. And I thought that doesn't hurt. It was gone. So that, after that, it was well, it's going to break. It's going to break. So it was. Yeah. Off, it was just keep playing, and if it goes, it goes. So that fear just completely left after he whacked me. So I did actually thank him, and thanks for hitting me on it because now I know it's not going to break. So, and that was under uh, Teddy showing him as well, wasn't it? At that time when so you had a few games there under Teddy and, and training sessions as well. So, you know, did uh, what, what was it that you kind of learned off of Teddy, I suppose, and what um, about your game, you know, being a striker that you are and having somebody there that's been there and done it at club and country level? Yeah, for me personally, obviously, I, everyone knows Teddy Sharing. If you play football and know football, you know Teddy Sharing, obviously, the name, you know, what career, what career he had. Um, for him to come in, obviously, I was just trying to listen and learn to everything he could do. And the main thing I think I probably picked up from him was movement. Obviously, he's not blessed with pace. You know, like I, as of my career developed, was obviously clear that pace is not going to be my strong suit because of my size. Yeah. And yeah, it was trying to just pick up little, little, little bits of gold that he'd say and try and add that into my game, which obviously it wasn't blessed with a lot of time, obviously, because he was trying to build his squad. But it was, I got a few little gems. <laughs> and uh, so that's obviously helped you along the way a little bit when you, when you signed back for. Uh, Wellstone and along the way after that as well and um you know what were your sort of conversations like with uh, the chairman Phil Wallace and some of the other sort of you know people around the club as well uh, away from the managerial side you know did you have uh, good chemistry with them? I had a few chats with Phil he said yeah I, at the time obviously when I signed I had the meeting with him and he said look obviously you've come from miles away which obviously in standard it is but physically, you've got all the attributes to, you know, kick on. It's just a case of technically whether you can get up to the level. Um, and obviously, when I come back from fitness, I was still training at the ground. I was trying to do as much as I could to try and get myself into, obviously, Teddy's plans at the time. Um, yeah. And he did say, look, you've got all the attributes. You just, you know, it's just on how you perform when people are watching. So I thought I had a chance and then it kind of just never really materialised. And uh, of course, you know, the club, as we said just a moment ago, have been on a, a good rise now. Um, and of course, we're remaining in the football league. And you know, uh, what have you made of Alex Ravel and, and the work that he's done? Yeah, he's done a great job. Um, obviously, the performances from the team. I, I don't obviously watch every minute, but obviously, I watch the um, non league show and not long show, the other one where obviously the games are on. But yeah, they're, they're obviously doing well and winning points and getting up that table, which obviously for Stevenage is, for the, obviously the facilities they've got, they should be in and amongst that league too, if not the playoffs every season. And hopefully that's, you know, something that the club can build on now because last season, I say, I say, I say last season, but it's obviously the season has just finished now. So two seasons ago, the club were in a real dire straits um, on the pitch, you know, doing fantastic stuff off the pitch still. Um, but, but then on the pitch, it just wasn't working for whatever reason. Um, lots of different managerial changes and, you know, the big squad and, and injuries and everything like that as well. Uh, but then, you know, last season under Alex Ravel and, and Dean Wilkins and, you know, experienced um, men there helping out Alex, who, of course, is a, a sort of very new man to the job. Um, it, it really kind of, you know, that, that would have helped him massively as well. 
yeah, they seem to turn it around and obviously the lads started playing much better football and there seems to just be a different atmosphere around the club, obviously, when they took over, which is obviously great for fans and obviously the players being involved in it. So, yeah, hopefully they can kick on and keep you know, enjoying it and progressing in the right ways. I think, uh, yeah, that's it, really. I'm sure they will. And, of course, um, off, you know, off the pitch there, the club have always been very active in terms of the community work that has been done. And, um, you know, it was a, a, a massive, um, you know, sort of time for, for that during the pandemic as well. Uh, there was players, staff, you know, everybody out and about and supporting people in the local area. And that's massive. And, and you know, it's uh, a real credit to Stevenage to, to be out doing that. Yeah, well, I lived in Stevenage for a couple of months. Um, so obviously, obviously living there, it's a different. Obviously, you realise how big of a club Stevenage is in Stevenage. It is, you know, a lot of people are big, obviously fans, and they go to the games. But obviously, the work that Stevenage do to the community and for the community, obviously, is amazing. It's massive for obviously the town. So yeah, they've done wonders for everyone. It's been great, of course, during the pandemic as well. Everyone kind of needs that extra helping hand um, to, to kind of just make sure that everything's kind of, you know, on the right track for them and, and things there, you know, whether it was the sandwich, sandwich deliveries, the medication and the helpline, there was plenty of different um, options there that, you know, people could actually use and things were there to help, even even sort of being vaccinated. They've got it as a vaccination centre now as well. Yeah, no, I think whenever they can do anything to help out the community, I think they're obviously first straight onto it, so... Obviously, the pandemic's been hard for everybody, whether it's been stuck at home or can't get out because you're vulnerable. It's been a difficult time for, I think, not just us, the whole entire world at this minute. But obviously, if students are in a place to help people out, they're first to do it. So it's great. And uh, yeah, absolutely. And I think finally, really, is uh, what are you sort of up to yourself these days? Are you still involved in football in any sort of capacity or have you kind of stepped away from football now? Uh, I'm still playing, but obviously nowhere near the standard. Um, obviously, as the, the thing it was the third or the second lockdown started, obviously most of my football got thrown out. Um, I had a new newborn to look after, and obviously day life and work. And I'm a site manager now, so obviously I'm nine to five, and then little when I get home. So it's been a bit chaotic at the moment. But now as he's getting bigger, obviously my football will start coming back. So it's just a case of whether I can run off the extra pounds I put on through lockdown. So. Hopefully it's not too brutal. I think that's it, you know, for everyone really. It's about getting back to that normality now when, you know, next week is a, is a huge time. Of course, Monday next week, uh, where the, the easing of the, lo the, uh, the lockdown continues to, you know, a lot more things that people are allowed to do. Fans being back in stadiums as well for the final couple of games of the Premier League and, you know, cup games and things like that. The weekend, the FA Cup, you're going to have uh, some fans in for Chelsea, Leicester as well. And, yeah, there was for Man City, wasn't there, a few weeks ago when they won the League Cup as well. So hopefully there's a couple of fans to obviously watch Chelsea win that FA Cup. <laughs> and then the same again for the Champions League if they can. It would be great for me being a Chelsea fan. So, yeah. Well, it's good that football's obviously getting back to normal because obviously a lot of people have struggled without it. And as a player, obviously, it's, it's a massive difference playing behind closed doors. Um, obviously, when the crowd's in there, it is a completely different game. I was going to ask that about the fans as well, because the fans can be your 12th man. They can you know, push you on. They can um, help you to defend the lead or whatever it may be. Yeah. Oh, the fans are massive, massive for football. Obviously, at the, at the top, top level, you've seen it with Liverpool. Obviously, Anfield is just a ridiculous place. And I'm a Chelsea fan. So for me to say that's a big deal. But yeah, they, that's, if that's not proof enough, you know, how, how important the fans are, um, yeah, it's massive for football. So hopefully that can get back to normal you know, sooner rather than later. Yeah, I'm sure, you know, the, the government are doing all they can at the moment and, you know, it's going to be great to have fans back in. And of course, next season for Steamage as well, um, to have that in, in D2 and the Lamex rocking as it does, the East Terrace, you know, the, uh, the song is coming out of the Terrace and that's surely going to help the boys on to, you know, pos possibly, uh, you know, achieve promotion or playoffs next year. Yeah. Yeah, massive. Obviously, it's been a long time since I've heard it rocking, but I remember how much that backstand used to get going. So, yeah, it's massively important for the boys to obviously hear that. And it does completely just lift you up. If you're having a bad day and you're there, oh, yeah, it's an amazing time to be on that pitch, especially when the fans are proper, especially with the old Stevenage Luton games. They used to go a bit special, them ones. But, yeah, it was good. 
And I'm, I'm sure once the fans are back in there, Steam will be right up and amongst it. And you played in one of those. Was it Luton or was it Cambridge, one of the derbies you played in? It was one of them, wasn't it? I played in the Cambridge. I think I played in the both the home fixtures. Mm. Uh, and I missed out on the away fixture because I think we went, went to Luton one of the last games of the season. Um, so obviously I experienced it at home and I think they, I think they scored the winner in the last minute. Yeah. We were celebrated, oh, we were fuming. Um, and then the reverse fixture at their ground, obviously I was injured. So I just, I think I just started walking. I think me and my dad went and we sat in, which for me is the first time I've actually been to Luton. Obviously being a local lad is quite a shock. Walking through the houses and the terraces to get into the ground was like, wow, this is amazing. And then you get into the pitch and it's like, who, like, how could you hide this stadium in here? behind that sort of block of flats like yeah it's, it's crazy but obviously on the pitch i think the boys did actually squeeze a win there um, i think it was one nil wasn't it was that when um yeah i'm trying to think was that uh petty school i think was it petty or was it kenner's yeah or maybe it was two one yeah. yeah i can't remember now it's such a long time ago yeah. But, uh, yeah i remember it was just like it was proper proper rivalries and obviously it went on for years before so yeah, it was amazing to be a part of it. Obviously, not so much when we lost, but much more when we won, and it was good to be involved in it, yeah. All right, well, I'm going to let you go now, and, uh, yeah, so thanks for doing this, Con, and um, take care. Cheers, mate. Cheers, thanks a lot.